Hello and welcome to Speak Easy with Paul F. Tompkins. I am still Paul F. Tompkins, and you will recognize my guest from her roles in Mean Girls, Party Down, and currently as Virginia Johnson on Masters of Sex. Please say hello to Lizzie Kaplan. Lizzie, cheers. Cheers. Thank you for being here. Great to be here. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, oh. Yeah, that'll get the job done. Sure. Oh, ha ha. Already. Let's get to talking. All right. <laughs> You've been acting for a very long time, yeah. considering your brief life. Well, that's nice of you to say. Right? The brief life part. But since <laughs> you're a young lady, and you've been acting since you're an even younger lady. That's true. Did you always know that this is what you were going to do? I did not. I knew probably three months before I started acting. Really? Yes, indeed. What did you What did you have designs on doing? I wanted to be a spy for a minute. I wanted to be a doctor, a heart doctor, cardiologist. Sure. That's where uh, the money is. So I thought that's actually the reason why I wanted to do it because I thought I would make a lot of money, not because I wanted to save lives. Was it really? Yeah. That you thought this is my key to yeah. a comfortable life. It's true. I remember I was sitting in my in my parents' room watching the evening news and it showed all the salaries of the jobs that you could get and cardiologist, the highest one. <laughs> I've never told anybody that before. <laughs> well, this is quite a scoop. I know, right? And thank you. <laughs> right? Exclusive. So, what did you play on Freaks and Geeks? I played a girl named girl number one. <laughs> Ooh, number one? Uh, yeah, right? Must be nice. I didn't mess around with girl number two <laughs> or number three. That was my pilot role. I was very angry that I was not cast as the lead of that show. Sure, of course. Obviously. And uh, then my character came back three more times and I was given a name. That mm. name was Sarah. And did you hang out with Freaks or Geeks? I hung out with Freaks-ish, and then my biggest episode was the finale, and I was Jason Siegel's character's new girlfriend who was really into disco, so mm. I don't think she really fit into either, either category. Right. Yeah. She was her own beast. And then, <laughs> well, this, the times were changing. Yeah. New paradigms evolving. That's what they were commenting on. Yeah. Right there. That's right. Hey guys, we gotta mention the paradigms. Yeah. Hey, it's the finale. <laughs> Have we mentioned the paradigm yet? So they did it. And this so is delicious. This is not it's bad. Strong. This is <laughs> you get your money's worth. Yeah, it did. In that time you knew this is what I wanna do. No. I still had no fun. It was very scary. It was very scary because really? they were they knew each other well, and they, they had experience on sets and being actors and actresses. I had no experience doing any of that. I did not know what a mark was or that uh, each scene took hours and hours to shoot. I knew nothing. Right. I would just hide in my trailer until they came and got me and told me to eat or stand on my mark, and right. I made no friends. And I was really uncomfortable and really shy. And I can't say that I left that being like, well, yep, yeah, this makes a lot of sense to me. I knew I wanted to like get up in the ranks so maybe I could garner a little bit of respect, but it wasn't this joyful experience. Is it that you wanted to garner respect or did you just want to feel more comfortable? Did you want to feel like you belonged? I did, I did. It was weird. I never had uh, lots of problems in real high school fitting in. Mm -hmm. But in fake high school, it was I was intimidated by all of them, and I didn't know really how to behave at all, and it took me a while before I did. But what I, I would imagine, though, while some of those kids might have had prior screen experience, I would say probably a good deal of them, it was their first time as well, right? Yes. But, but you didn't know that. I didn't know that, and you're treated better and more confident when you're a series regular on a show, as opposed to some chick who's coming around for one line. But right. my first line was with uh, Ben Foster, who's a really good actor. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Do you remember what that line was? It May was... I talk to girl number one? <laughs> he was like a, a mentally handicapped young boy, mm -hmm. and he asks me to the prom, and I say something about, oh, I can't, I already have a date. I think I said that line 47,000 times into the mirror of my tiny, tiny little trailer. Yeah. Just the one line? Yeah, you over, and over, and over and over again, again. putting the emphasis on different words. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, what else can you do? <laughs> felt, felt real nice. Uh, because I'm, now some of those people you've worked with since then. A, a lot of them I consider some of my really close friends. Yeah. Uh, but it took us a while. I, right. I, I mean, Busy Phillips. Mm -hmm 
who I believe you are friends with as well. Yes. She, I talked to her not at all. Mm -hmm. And now she's, I was just with her last night. She's somebody I see all the time. Martin Starr and Jason Siegel and Franco. It's like, they're good dudes. Did everybody remember you from that time? Yeah. Mm -hmm. that, it really did feel like high school, mm -hmm. that whole thing. Um, and a, a lot of people came onto that show just for little parts. And it was total, uh, it was just like a total fluke that my first job happened to be the coolest possible first job you could ever have because it was it had nothing to do with me. Yeah. And you couldn't really appreciate it at the time. No, I didn't appreciate it. I was like, These guys are dicks. I, I didn't like them. I right. didn't. Right. Confession time. There we go. I did not On the record. Them. There it is. I'm really competitive, and mm -hmm. so as soon as the seed was planted, I was not comfortable being the one who was ignored and, and not treated as important. Mm -hmm. And so then I had to, you know, prove myself mm -hmm. over the course of the rest of my life. Where, what's the status of that uh, situation now? Everybody fucking respects me now. <laughs> Everybody, people, they avert their eyes when I walk into the room. Do you, f do you feel that, is it the, um, the competitive nature that kept you doing it? Yeah, I think so. I'm, I'm competitive and impatient, and so if I do something, I, I get very frustrated if I can't be really good at it, mm -hmm. uh, and I'll quit things that I don't, if I don't see like a, like a oh, maybe I could compete with the big guns, then I, I see no reason to really continue mm -hmm. doing it. Was it ever difficult for you to take direction? Because now there you are, you're trying to do something in front of other people sure. and somebody's saying try it this way. Was it ever a thing where you bristled at that and felt like I did it the way that it should be done? Of course I've had uh, many a moment of that, but for the most part, no. I, I think if anything, I really liked being able to take direction mm -hmm. over going and this is exactly how I want to do it, you know? So you wanted to be able to take direction better than anyone else took direction. And I wanted everybody to see me taking direction. Really well. <laughs> Look at that healthy person. Yeah, over you there. see? Said do it angry this time, and I did. Party Down was a, first of all, my wife's absolute favorite show of all time. Tell your wife I said thank you. Honey, Lizzie says thank you. Don't Thanks. look at my camera. Don't. Shit. That's okay. Thanks. It was an amazing cast of people. I, I've heard various members of the cast talk about it a little bit. You you always had very little time in which to do it. Yeah. Um, it was a show that seemed very improvised, but was not as improvised as people think, right? Yeah. And it was the little show that could, and you know, it kept happening for a while and then it stopped happening. Yeah. Um, it seems to be one of those shows that for an actor, it's um, very rare that you have an experience like that. Do you feel that you'll be chasing that experience for a good part of your career? Uh, that was a very important job for all of us. Mm -hmm. uh, even, it, it was important even when nobody was watching it and nobody heard of it mm -hmm. because it was that. It was this like lightning in a bottle group of people who we had four days to shoot each one. We could never go over 12 hour days. We had no table reads. Um, they're all really good at improv but yeah, there was no time. They paid us nothing mm -hmm. and we all signed on for a second season. Jane Lynch would have if Glee didn't sink its dirty, dirty claws into her. And yeah, it was one of those magical situations where it felt like, I guess what I had been chasing since my first job, but I didn't realize that that was what I had been chasing until I experienced it. I've been really lucky. I've had some amazing casts and I've gotten very, very close with the casts of a lot of the stuff that I've gotten to do. There's something about that where it felt like to all of us, oh, this is how it's supposed to feel. I mean, I'm really grateful. I know lots of actors who still haven't had that experience. Mm -hmm. And I, I mean, I tip my hat to them because I don't know if I would continue doing it if it wasn't as fun as that job was and like showed me how fun it is supposed to be. Yeah. The thing that I loved the most about Party Down was how sad we were allowed to make it. Mm -hmm. And we didn't have to redeem these characters at the end of every episode. We didn't even have to redeem them at the end of the season. And on network television, you're expected to have a beginning, middle, and an end to each episode. So like the random person who tunes in in the middle of the season can identify with these characters. Mm -hmm. I never really was interested in doing that after Party Down. It could change, I guess, in the future, but I always wanted to do, whether it was comedy or drama, I was more drawn to cable because you're allowed to 
take it to a dark, sad place, and you're allowed to tell a story over a season instead of an episode. Mm -hmm. And I think a lot of that had to do with Party Down, yeah. Mm -hmm. So now doing Masters of Sex, certainly different in many ways than Party Down. Um, less sex. Less, <laughs> right? <laughs> ah, ah, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, back, back. Um, <laughs> you're around a lot of sex scenes. Uh, you're in a lot of sex scenes. You're around a lot of sex scenes. Like, there's just sex happening all over the place. Yeah. But you're very comfortable with this. Some people, it could be, they could be a little freaked out by it. Sure. Some people could be bothered by uh, being desensitized to it. Yeah. But you seem very comfortable with it. I am comfortable with it. I think the people who would be very uncomfortable with doing that would never audition for mm -hmm. this show, would never go after it, because it's no surprise this is, you know, right. part of the job. Yeah. Of course, it's a, it's, it can be very uncomfortable. It makes it a lot easier when you trust and love your crew and your co-stars. And I talk about a lot how there are people who come onto our show and they have no lines. They're part of a montage and they're naked and masturbating. And that's way harder than what I have to do. Right. I can make the AD take me to each monitor and show me who's going to be around it. And I can be like a bit of a, a Nazi about the whole thing. And. It's fine. I mean, listen, as soon as you do it once, it's like, now you've seen it. Nothing's changing. Is that really it? Like, it's, it's, I, I mean, the build up to that first time must be, I can't imagine what you, what goes through your head. It's weird. You know? It's the, the very first time that I did it was terrifying mm -hmm. on another show. And I've only done it on the show I'm on now and then True Blood. Mm -hmm. And I was very, very scared. But I had a lot of people who the like Anna Paquin was really cool about telling me, you know, it's gonna feel like kind of empowering and that'll be all right. And I was drunk, mm -hmm. not, not unlike I am right now. <laughs> I, actually, I remember when I went on set, it was my second or third day of work on True Blood and it was my nude scene. And, you know, normally you have like a wardrobe rack with your outfits and there was <laughs> there was just one pair of underwear on a hanger and that was it. <laughs> the hanger oh, was God. a nice touch. Yeah, it was nice. It was nice that they hung it up for yeah. me. I've tried to do what the people on True Blood did for me, which is to make the girls who come in feel as comfortable as possible. And I agree, it is this oddly empowering thing. Because mm -hmm. before you do it, it could be like, oh, do, will I feel exploited by this or, or will I feel okay? And you feel, I felt certainly like, empowered, mm -hmm. it was interesting. The only times that it was weird, because I would try to be friendly to everybody, mm -hmm. there were some girls who were just very focused and didn't want to talk or make, you know, they didn't want to have small talk, which, mm -hmm. listen, whatever, whatever, whatever blows your hair back right. in that moment. I mean, what would they say, like, hey, no offense, but? One girl just ignored me. I saw her boobs and she ignored me. Were you supposed to see these boobs? No, I pulled her shirt down. I think. Well, there you go. <laughs> yeah. Lizzie Kaplan, thank you so much for being here. What a pleasure to chat with you. Pleasure. Mm -hmm. More, more, mm -hmm. more. Uh, oh! Whew. <laughs> that does it for this edition of Speakeasy. Please join me again next time when my guest will be a different person. <laughs> this is good stuff. Good choice. It's just pure burbs. Just, right? it's just nothing but the burbs. Just nonstop burbs. Oh, the burbs. Thanks for watching. Be sure to subscribe and check back every Monday to see who I interview next. And for more info about Speakeasy, visit MadeMan.com.